You know, we have another video, our third and final video. This is about the Mars rover. Actually, there are two rovers, identical twins, I believe, on opposite sides of the planet. We're going to see a video about that and then come back, discuss that, and also some other topics with space. So let's go ahead and roll that tape. For a 90-day mission, I remember when we landed, we were excited. We would you know, have three months to explore this region around our, our landing site. And we've basically blown the doors off that. Um, you know, for six years now, we've been doing classic field geology on Mars, learning about the planet and its ancient past. And it's been, there have been powerful revelations that have come well after that prime mission. This experience of spirit is something that I've really kind of integrated into my whole identity. You know, this has become part of what I do. And it looked at the very beginning of the mission like this was going to be something that I got to do for a very brief time for three months. And that was terrific and it was unique and it was special. I was really looking forward to it. And I never in my wildest imagination believed it was going to go on for years. Spirit really has had to have a lot of spirit to, to keep going. It's been the little rover that could in a way. It's had to work very hard for all of its discoveries. Two years into the mission, so well past the prime mission, the right front wheel stopped working and the wheel doesn't spin. So when we drive, we drive backwards, dragging that wheel, and it would cut a furrow. And so it, it actually turned out to be yet another scientific instrument or scientific investigation because it now trenched as we would drive along, revealing what's just beneath the surface. One thing that we seem to be finding almost anywhere we're digging this trench are these widespread deposits of various kinds of salts and minerals. They look this brilliant white or yellow in the color images, um, and that's because they're uh, either sulfur or silica or salts uh, of various kinds. And the really important thing about these minerals, and salts in particular, is that the only way they form is with water. So the fact that we're finding these salts is real evidence that there was hot water over a very widespread area, not just little isolated pockets. Mars really could have been a place that supported life. And without these rovers driving over these vast distances, far beyond their expectations, we would never have known that. That's one of the great discoveries that Spirit did well after its prime mission and as a result of one of the um, most serious uh, mechanical failures we've had on either rover. Mars is a pretty harsh place. We've had dust storms before. We have really low power situations in winter. We've had other small glitches that have caused us some tense moments. But um, Spirit seems to always find a way of turning some kind of adversity into uh, something positive. We have a very ambitious stationary science campaign for the rover. I mean, for six years, we've been driving both Spirit and Opportunity, not really taking any time to stop and smell the roses. Um, there's a lot of uh, lander science that one can do, and we plan to do that with, with Spirit. Spirit's continued triumphs absolutely amaze me. Just the fact that we've had so much more of this mission than we ever thought we were going to have. What these rovers have done is that they have made Mars a familiar place. Mars is now our neighborhood. Uh, my team goes to work on Mars every day. And that, I think, is the, the great intangible contribution from these rovers, is that Mars is no longer this you know, strange, um, unknown world. I mean, yes, it's still mysterious, but um, much of Mars is now known to us as, as a familiar place. And that was our video about the Mars rovers. You know, I really find this fascinating how familiar Mars has become. He said that, you know, we go to work on Mars every day. Well, we've really made some huge strides there. I have some questions which, you know, either one of you could feel free to answer. It said in the video that there's evidence that there was once a lot of water on Mars. So the question is, where could it have gone and why don't we see it now? Well, certainly some of the water has gone into the ground and been frozen. And people have found that water. Some of it, of course, goes into the atmosphere. When it goes into the atmosphere, there isn't any ozone to protect it. So the ultraviolet light from the sun breaks it up into hydroxyl molecules and hydrogen molecules. Hydrogen is gone forever, just you know, leaves the planet. The hydroxyl with the oxygen goes to the surface, oxidizes the rock, and the rock becomes red. 
your oxygen is forever locked up in those rocks. Not as water, but as oxygen. So does that mean that the water cannot be recovered at this point if people were to go there? Well, certainly the water that's frozen in the ice and the surface could be recovered. Might, in fact, have some remains or some signs of ancient life. So that should be recoverable, but the, once the hydrogen leaves from a water molecule, you don't reconstitute it. You know, at this point, we have explored pretty much all the planets of the solar system and pretty much all their moons. What would you say are some of the most interesting and unexpected things that we've discovered in our own solar system in the past 10 years? By far, the fact that we're getting water spraying out of the moon in Saladus around Saturn has been dramatic. It's indicate there's an underground or under, there's an ocean there under the ice. Maybe it's a thousand feet of ice, but there's water there. And when there's water, there's a possibility of life. Uh, uh, even in the Antarctic, where things are very, very cold, people find some life under that ice. And so that's very, very exciting. And for me, I would say uh, to the other extreme, the uh, coldest temperatures observed on the moon now by the Diviner mission, our instrument on LRO, are as cold as uh, 28 degrees Kelvin. So those are temperatures colder than Pluto. So some of the coldest temperatures in the entire solar system are right in our backyard at the moon. And those are acting as fantastic cold traps uh, gathering material uh, for that, billions of years. Is that just because it never faces the sun? That's right. It's always in shadow. Some of these areas are always in shadow. And without a tangible atmosphere around the moon, uh, the heat can be easily dissipated and not uh, 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 blown back in by atmosphere. Have we shed 